Welcome back to the channel folks and to another tutorial. This one is going to look at how I assemble and work with the metal and resin kits that you get for Flames of War. There's a lot of really good plastic kits out there now in the Flames of War range but the less commonly used vehicles, you know, the support vehicles, um, the like artillery type of vehicles, most of them are in metal and resin and some of them are, are even in metal resin and plastic. So I've got a large batch of these to do as part of an ongoing commission so I thought it would be good to show you how I go through working with this material, the kind of glues that I use and also how you put them together in a quick way but in a way that will keep all of these different types of materials together. I'm going to show you how I assemble broom bars and mobile wagons in this guide and I think that'll give you plenty of good ideas for how you yourself can do your own metal and resin kits. Let's begin by looking at the broom bar box set. There's a late war and a mid war version of this but they're both the same in, in that they have got three types of material. You're working with plastic, resin and metal and you have to get all of these things to stick together and work together. Now I'm going to be using these tools, very familiar tools guys, you know, files, uh, hobby knife, which I, I use quite a blunt hobby knife by the way folks when I'm working close to my fingers and of course snippers and a tray to catch all of the shavings and all, all kind of things that you're going to create here that you don't want lying around and you want to be able to put safely into the bin. I always begin assembly with the tracks and the first thing you have to do is see how they fit against the hull. The hull can sometimes not be completely straight and certainly the tracks can easily be bent uh, as part of the production process or just in travelling from one place to another. So you can gently bend the tracks to match the hull. Very gently folks, don't go crazy because you'll bend it right out of shape and if you have done that to get a nice tight fit then make sure you keep the tracks that you've bent to shape beside the hull that they match before it comes to going. I'm going to be using Arrowdite to attach as many pieces as I can folks. Arrowdite is a really really strong resin that you mix up as you can see and it, it takes 24 hours to dry. I don't recommend the quick drying version, it's a lot harder to work with and dries a little bit brittle but once it dries it's very very strong and if you are clever you can use it even on small components. To get around the issue of the extended drying time for Arrowdite, I use super glue to help out. Quick point folks, never let super glue and Arrowdite touch because it creates some kind of weird substance that emits smoke, looks suspicious, doesn't glue anything together, it basically because it goes hard and brittle. So my Arrowdite is ready, I put a couple of dots of super glue at the end, I already know that the tracks uh, fit nice and tight to both sides at once. Next I'm going to put a blob of Arrowdite into the centre of the underside of the hull you can see there and I'm careful not to put on too much or put it too close to the super glue so that when you push the track into place it's not going to push the Arrowdite out and contact the super glue. Then we can put both tracks on, be careful you don't cover your fingers in glue at any point here folks or you'll start transferring it around the figure. So get them on straight, push them down onto a flat surface so that you know the both tracks have raised up and are in contact with the, uh, the underside of the hull nice and straight. Check out, make sure everything looks straight, tight onto the sides, tight up to the, the lower uh, areas of the hull and nice and flat and then you can set that aside just for a little bit for the super glue to set. We're not finished with the Arrowdite yet folks, even though we've got little components to add we can still use that to help us. So I'm putting the barrel on here with a little bit of Arrowdite on the end of the metal component I am going to use some blue tack to hold it in place whilst it dries. So. Put the blue tack on, line up the barrel, use the blue tack to make sure the barrel is going to sit in a position where it is straight 
as in coming out the hull at the angle that you want and also pointing up or down at the angle that you want and the Plutac won't sag, it'll keep its position. And you can leave it in place overnight until the Arrowdite has dried. But keep the blue tack away from the Arrowdite folks because it makes cleaning up quite difficult once the Arrowdite has dried. We can also use the Arrowdite to get the fenders in place. Arrowdite is a filler as well as a glue and getting these little pieces, little metal pieces lined up perfectly with perfectly smooth flush surfaces for super glue to do its job right, that can be tricky. Arrowdite can fill the gaps as well as be a stronger glue than the very brittle super glue. So use some blue tack again once you've got that Arrowdite in place. Just remember not to let the blue tack go too tight and too far underneath the fender because when it dries it can be a bit tricky to get it out without re removing the uh, fender at the same time. Next for the broom bar we have the dreaded plastic shears in. Look at all these components folks, there's so many. Fortunately we don't have to use too many. We're going to take one of these short length um, supports. Notice I'm using really thin snippers here folks, it makes all the difference. These little supports can deform when you're cutting them out, so you need a thin cutting snipper to stop that from happening. So just going to be using two of these little thin snippers. We're going to use the long support that attaches to the Shurzen itself and the Shurzen. Not going to need to use the rest of them folks but they are at least there if you do break any of those little supports. The first thing I'm going to do is to attach the little support, the little strut to the back of the broom bar and there is a little indent in the resin hull for you to see where it goes. Just make sure that when you're putting it on you're lining it up with the cast struts that are in resin on the side of the hull so that there is as much chance as possible of you getting a straight shears in by the time you've finished putting it all together. Next up going to attach the long strut to the shoes in itself and I'm using a very thin glue here folks so that it flows around both components. It's a very handy uh, kind of glue for this because you can place it quickly, move it around as required and the glue is in the right place on the components for you to get the accurate fit that we need once again to get a straight shoes in. That's the shears and assembled but there's nothing behind them, they're just hanging there and that means just asking for them to fall off. This is a problem that you know, I've experienced with these, these kind of plastic shears and not in the new kits because they have supports but just on these old style plastic shears and. So I'm going to use the sprue to make some kind of support to sit in behind them between them and the hull. So I'm going to snip off a bit of the sprue. There's various bits of the sprue you can use that have got nice little, um, little, little bits you can trim to size. I'm going to use the, the long length of the sprue that I've uh, selected and glue that to the plastic shoes in. So I've just got to check it for depth now so that I get a vertical drop on the shoes in once they're in place. So you can see it's a bit tricky here folks, even trickier to get it on camera but we're just going to look to see if it generally fits in place then we can do some gluing and some trimming to make sure we've got everything the right size and in the right place for the glue to dry. So it's good old plastic glue to fix the support onto the shoes in. This is a bit where I normally have to go back and forward a couple of times, glue it in place 
and then put it on and then find oh my goodness it's in the wrong place start sliding it around but remember it's going to be completely out of sight and if the length of support you're using isn't particularly big it's going to be very very hard to see unless you are turning it upside down um, so a little bit of adjustment get it in the right place and then you can set it aside to dry And you can see here it's it's not bending, it's not moving, it's nice and solid. Now you can just use a blob of uh, perhaps green stuff or milliput to go behind the shoes and that's a nice solid way of doing things too. Uh, in my experience um, the, the shoes can just as easily fall off the arrowdite as the plastic. Um, and you'll see I've got another step to help get a really strong bond between the plastic strut that we've put in and the metal hull. But that is an option you can consider folk, some kind of filler. I attach the shoes in after everything's been painted, otherwise it's very difficult to get around everything. And you'll notice I'm back to using Arrowdite here. And I'm putting a sufficient amount of Arrowdite, not too much, because you don't want it going everywhere, on the front, so to speak, facing of the support and also on the top and then I'm going to carefully attach it in place on the hull after I've added a few blobs of super glue to tack it into place onto the supports. Now you can see those blobs of arrowdite when we push it into place we'll line it up nice and accurate and then that arrowdite will sink into the teeth of the tracks, the return rollers, the top of the wheels and give a really nice strong set kind of bond overnight and you will find that that is very reliable even compared to a blob of milliput or such likes. And a wee side note to finish off with the broom bars folks is I use the sort of central span off the sprues, clip them out and cut them down and use them as little mixing sticks for painting my airbrush. Now let's look at a kit that is really challenging and that is the mobile wagon. Sorry for the shiny surface there folks, that is actually a box of mobile wagons. These have metal and resin components but they have got so many metal components. The resin hulls are nice and simple as always, but look at this folks. Oh my goodness, what the hell are we going to do with that? It looks like uh, shrapnel from a grenade or such likes. Lots of parts guys, so we're going to go through the processes here to see how we can attach things, what goes where and how we can keep things nice and strong. Metal barrels, folks. Uh, if you are an old school Flames of War or even a war gamer, um, you've probably straightened quite a few metal barrels in your day. So the trick here is not to try to do too much in one go. Don't try and make them all go straight just by pinching it and pulling it in one direction. I tend to start at the base of the barrel and start straightening any kinks along the length of the barrel up to the end. Take your time and watch as you're going to make sure you are heading in the right direction and straightening each little kink out as you go so that it gradually gets straighter from a space up to the muzzle. And now some filing. We're going to be doing a lot of filing folks uh, with metal components. You know there's mould lines and uh, mould issues and so on. Now the trick of course with the barrels is that you file any flash off any unwanted bits of metal that's on there in a way that you're still going to end up with a round barrel. You don't want to flatten it down. So just be careful as you go. Like for instance the top of the muzzle there to get that flat you could easily break it off if you use too much force and if you're not supporting it in the right way. And you'll notice I am filing over a tray. This, this tray I use to catch all of the filings you don't want 
covering your house. Uh, I empty it regularly so that it doesn't get knocked over by accident. You'll notice the colour of my hands, folks. You have to make sure that you're cleaning your hands as you're working between each stage. For instance, if you get glue, super glue, onto that, um, it's going to stay there for a very long time and you certainly don't want to be eating any sandwiches or any crisps as you're working uh, through this part of the process. So remember to keep your hands clean. Uh, regularly wash them as you're going here. Now we've got to put this really complicated gun together. Uh, it's complicated in that uh, when you're looking at it, it doesn't necessarily explain to you what you should be doing. So dry fitting is important, checking uh, photographs uh, of the kit and also just checking out the Flames of War website as well for assembly information. Now I'm just going to be using super glue for this because Arrowdite and these little components, how am I going to hold them together to for them to dry overnight. Super glue and Arrowdite together might work in certain small components if you allow the super glue to dry and then put a little bit of Arrowdite in as a bit of reinforcement. But I'm just using super glue here uh, for this type of element. It's very, very complicated. You may find the accelerator helps in this process, folks. I've used it in the past and it's worked very well. It can maybe give a little bit of a brittle finish to the super glue, but nothing significant. So think about accelerator just so you're not holding the things together for ages. If you're putting any mobile wagons together, hopefully seeing me doing this here will be of help to you too. Now the gun shield is quite a complicated shape so it's in two parts which makes our life much more difficult here folks. Not only do we have millions of parts for the gun itself, we've also got two parts on the gun shield which is more things to fall off possibly. So let's just make sure we get everything filed down nice and tight, nice and flush so those two pieces go together well. When the super glue has set on the gun shield, we can now put it on the front of the gun mount itself. And this is a bit tricky, folks. We've got to make sure that it is as solid on there as possible, but it's also as even as possible and allows the gun to uh, project in as straight and uh, parallel a way as we can. Now I'm going to do the big fold down side panels. I'm putting these in the fully down position. Uh, it is possible to put them in the closed position or slightly open position, but I'm not going to cover all those options in this video, folks. I'm going to put these ones fully down. And these are really quite vulnerable uh, because of how they are placed. It's very easy just to knock them off. Uh, when you're picking them up or putting them down, you know, a little bit of pressure one way or the other. They're like levers sticking out of the side here. So we're going to use our Arrowdite and super glue uh, combination once again to get a stronger possible result. Once again, I'm going to be using the Arrowdite as a bit of a filler here too, between the metal component and the resin component. It just strengthens up that edge a little. Um, don't overdo it and make sure that if you are going to be a little bit messy, that maybe you're more messy on the underside of this kit than the upper side. But that's it for the mobile wagon folk once we've got these in place. Just leaves me to say, as usual, folks, thanks for watching. Thanks for following the channel. There's plenty more guides like this out there in the playlists, and I've got more on the go even just now. So, 
thanks to all the subscribers out there if you'd like to subscribe please do so and if you hit the bell button that means you'll definitely see us all on the next one